Let's find out. First off, if you don't know what a thunder tube is, all it is is a hollow tube with a membrane on one end and a long spring attached to that membrane. Theoretically, when you shake it, it's supposed to make a thunder sort of sound. But in my case, I really have to stress the theoretical part. I also decided to go into this project with a go big or go home attitude and decided to attempt to make a larger than necessary tube. And hence, I picked up some buckets I thought I could repurpose. Because I didn't want to try to literally cut off the entire bottom, I thought that drilling a bunch of big holes would achieve basically the same result. It should have occurred to me, however, that I'm already making these at home. Go big or you're going to be forcibly dragged out of your comfort zone to interact with real live humans. Perhaps would have been a better fit. Ah, the springs. Where do I even start? I wanted a larger diameter spring for the larger diameter bucket. So my first attempt was using a screen door spring, which I very naively thought I could just pull apart with my bare hands. <laughs> Since that obviously didn't work, I got the brilliant idea to just make my own springs. Seriously? Seriously? I made this whole contraption with a PVC tube that I attached to my drill, and it became quickly obvious that the size of the piano wire wasn't compatible with the diameter of the tube, and it wouldn't retain its shape at all. Okay, I'll just make a smaller spring. It can't be that hard to make a long, consistent spring, right? Right? Well, if I had needed to just make a small, normal-sized spring, I at least did come close to achieving that. But it's definitely not what I was going for. The membrane of the tube also proved ridiculously difficult for no good reason. I used a 10 millimeter mylar sheet, which seemed to provide a small thunder sound when shaken, but it was just thick enough I had to tape it down and use a heat gun to help form it around the sides. I thought I'd be able to just zip tie it firmly in place, but it turned out the mylar was so slippery I couldn't find a single material that wouldn't slide right off it. Not wire, not various rubber bands. So hot glue and gaffer tape was my very homemade looking solution. My final experiment involved using tin paint cans and just attaching the spring right to the bottom. Not only was it vastly easier, but it produced a more successful result. I used a dab of hot glue on the inside to make sure the springs were more secure, but I wasn't so sure about the result it had, particularly on the smaller can. All right, so this is the big one right now that's just been hot glued together. <laughs> Not sure it was totally what I'm going for, but uh, it kind of works. Um, but the small one here, you can get almost, this sounds good. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do the thing I didn't want to do, and I'm going to try removing the hot glue and uh, attempt to solder it into place and seeing if that makes a difference in the sound at all. 
Mm, didn't want to do it, but here we are. But while I was in the middle of removing the hot glue, I had some thoughts. Can you solder aluminum? Why is the inside a different color? Is it painted? Is this a bad idea? Hmm. Aluminum requires special fluxes. Uh-huh. Ah, here's something. It doesn't solder well. Okay. Use mineral oil to prep, but also it might catch fire. Uh, never mind. Turns out I could literally just screw the spring right back into the can without using any additional glue, and it sounded exactly the same. So, crisis averted, more or less. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate where I've ended up with all of this at the moment. Uh, if you hear baby screaming and music playing, that's just my neighbors. It could go on forever, so I'm just going with it. And uh, let's be honest, I don't think I have a leg to stand on considering I'm making noise music in here. <laughs> so, you know, city life, yada yada. So, I am actually going to start with this terrible mistake. This did not work at all. Uh, I clearly need a different membrane or something, but... trusty uh, contact mic here, so let's see what we come up with. not as bad as I thought. Just something different uh, than anticipated, which is always fun. Uh, this guy here. Okay, and then there's this big one here. It has a little bit of a different spring. Thank <laughs> you. 
try on the small one. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, an attempt was made. Uh... I did come up with a few interesting sounds, although I'm not sure they do what I originally had planned them to do, uh, as is always the case, it seems like. Um, so yeah, probably need to delve into maybe uh, acoustics a little bit more to understand what's going on with some of these and how to get some of the sounds that I'm looking for. Um, maybe later. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>